So, you set a date with your interviewee, selected a quiet location where you won't be interrupted, and have reserved your audio recorder from the library. Now you're ready, right? Well, not quite. Before the interview, you need to test, test, and then test again to determine the optimal audio recorder settings for the interview. So let's go over these settings one by one now, and then we'll look at how they're typically used in different environments. First, we'll look on the back of the recorder where we'll find the limiter slash AGC switch. The AGC stands for Automatic Gain Control. When this is turned on, it suppresses noise by lowering the volume when the sound input is too high. If you're interviewing a person with a louder or softer voice than your own, the AGC will adjust the input volume to level things out. This can make for a much more enjoyable listening experience when the interviewer and the interviewee voices volumes are not matched. Next, the low cut removes the low frequencies from the recording and can help get rid of things like wind noise. Next, the mic gain setting can be turned on, or when turned on, sets the sensitivity of the recording device to high. This is something you'll probably want to turn on in a medium to large meeting to pick up voices around the room, or if you're recording nature sounds. For an intimate interview, you'll probably want this turned off, or at least experiment with it turned off. Next, the record volume buttons are located on the left side of the recorder. You should adjust the recording level so that the level meter on the front of the device reaches the highest level without the red peak indicator lighting up. This is also on the front of the device. If you have the AGC enabled, you will not need to adjust the input volume. So what type of audio files and settings should you choose? Uh, for CD quality, choose the Wave at 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, where 5 minutes will equal about 50 megabytes of information. If you're looking for professional quality, choose the Wave at 24-bit, 96 kilohertz, where 5 minutes will equal 200 megabytes. And lastly, if you're looking for internet distribution, uh, where you want a smaller file, you'll end up having lower quality, but MP3 at 128 kilobits and 44 megahertz or kilohertz, five minutes equals only five megabytes of data. The how to change the setting quality. You go up to the menu item, then select recorder setting. You can adjust the kilohertz by pressing the right button there or the left button to go down. To record the, the uh, file format, you can just click the right button there and back and forth between WAVE and MP3. Then when you're done, you can press the menu button to get back up to the recording, uh, recording level menu. Here are some rules of thumb for recording in different situations. For recording interviews, mm -hmm. you typically want to have the device pointing or leaning towards the interviewee if possible. And you'll want to turn the limiter AGC on to level out the volume, the voice volume of all the people in the interview. If recording indoors, the low cut can be turned off. However, if there's background noise from heating, uh, vents, or air conditioning, you might want to experiment turning the low cut on. And if the person you're interviewing is sitting fairly close to you ac across the table, you might want to experiment with leaving the mic gain turned off to try to limit the recording of background noises. If the mic gain is turned on, you'll likely need to turn up the recording volume. Next, for meetings, you probably want to have the limiter AGC turned on to level out the voice volume of all the people in the meeting. And if the recording's indoors, the low cut can be turned off. And in most meeting settings with more than two or three people, the mic gain should be turned on in order to pick up everyone's voices. So once you're face to face with your interviewee, you want to make sure to test the settings one more time in the location that you've selected to be 100% sure they're going to they're gonna work the way you anticipate. Their voice may be different than your voice when you tested before. The first thing you're going to want to do is press the red button in the middle. That actually doesn't start the recording. When the red light is blinking, you should test uh, the input levels and look at the input meters up top to make sure that they're not too low or too high. Once you're satisfied with that, you can adjust the uh, 
In addition, you can adjust the volume on the left-hand side, but once you're satisfied with the input levels, you press the red button again, red record button again, it'll go solid, and then you can, uh, and then it will start actually recording audio to the video card. When you've stopped, you press the uh, square button at the bottom, and it'll stop the recording. But it's important to remember the first time you press the red record button, it's just testing the input levels. To actually begin recording the information, you need to press the record button a second time. After your interview, all you need to do is trim a little bit at the beginning or end of the interview, or cut out a cell phone ring in the middle. If anything like that is necessary, you'll probably want to import the audio files into GarageBand. And in GarageBand, you can do any editing that you need to do, as well as export it for archival purposes and or for distribution on the internet.